Now I'm like, your mom and dad told you not to leave the house. I realized something earlier as uh, I'm getting older, which is, uh, which is fine. I'm at, I'm at that point where I realized uh, I might need glasses uh, for reading. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, so I had to make the hard decision, you know, to uh, stop reading. <laughs> yeah, I got colors and shapes down. I'm pretty good. I have the basics. I'm good. I'm cool with getting older. I knew I was getting older when I started rooting against the kids in scary movies. <laughs> Some of y'all know what I'm talking about, right? Remember how you watch Friday the 13th, Halloween, teenagers do something stupid or rebellious, but you still want them to make it? You want them to live. You're like, run in the barn, he's coming, run in the barn. <laughs> now I'm like, your mom and dad told you not to leave the house. <laughs> It's a school night, you're being disrespectful. <laughs> they in the barn, Jason, go get them. They in the barn. <laughs> Spank them first, they was drinking too. <laughs> I'm cool with it, I'm cool with it, but the, the downside of getting older is that you, you, get a point, you get to a point where you realize your mind and body aren't always on the same page. Oh my God, oh my God, that's where I'm at now. You know what I'm saying? And that's a hard place for dudes to be. I was playing basketball, went to block a shot, cause my mind <laughs> said, Ty, go block that shot. You can block that shot. Went to block the shot, my body was like, hey! <laughs> where you going? <laughs> you didn't check with us about blocking a shot. What we can do is let you twist the ankle and uh, hyperventilate. We got you covered on that. Because I play ball with these 20 year olds and I don't know why it's dumb, it's dumb. Because first of all, the motivation of a 20 year old in the gym, way different than mine. Way different than mine. They walk in the gym, they working on being the next LeBron. They working on being the next Kobe. I'm working on my cholesterol. I had a donut last night, bro, that's all. I'm just trying to work it off. That's all it is. <laughs> trying to sweat it out, dude. Ain't trying, to, ain't trying to win no championships in here, okay? And the recovery time. Recovery time of a 20-year-old, miraculous. Miraculous. They could twist an ankle, put a piece of gum on it, and be cool. <laughs> one kid last week broke his arm, broke his arm, ripped it off, grew another one. <laughs> I'm like, same tattoo and everything? <laughs> it's fine, man. It's, I do what I can. I do what I can to stay in decent shape, though. I realized something, though. I've given up uh, the six pack. I'm done. <laughs> I fought the fight, ladies. I did. I did everything they said you should do. Not eating after eight o'clock. Tried it. That's impossible. <laughs> That's an impossible request. But I tried it, Pilates. I tried Pilates, bro. Mm-hmm. Farted in my own face. <laughs> Which is humbling, I'll be honest with you. It changes you as a person, you know? Part of me died that day. Uh, That insanity workout, tried that. Was clinically dead for three minutes. <laughs> so Ty Barnett don't need a six pack. I just wanna be uh, shirtless sexy. That's all I'm going for now, shirtless sexy. Fellas, that's where you can take your shirt off and, uh, and your lady's not uh, disgusted. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You don't get a gag reflex from her. <laughs> you know. She's not like, oh, I should have made better choices. <laughs> <laughs> Those are some personal laughs right there. That's right. <laughs> I'm saying it's like candles lit, music's playing, you're like, Phew. she's like, Phew. 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 
I'm happy to be here in, uh, in Provo. Uh, I am. I was actually in Montana uh, not too long ago. And yeah, one person. Um, <laughs> And you can, I, I like Montana, it was actually a fun trip, but you can always tell when you're somewhere where there's not a lot of you. <laughs> I found that out in Montana and, uh, and here. Um, <laughs> you know how I can tell? You know how you can tell? The stare. The stare, not from, not from the adults. The adults are very good at hiding that they don't see a lot of you in person. <laughs> it's from the kids. The stare from the kids is always the same. It's like. <laughs> is that Kobe? <laughs> they don't know. They just want an autograph. That's all. Bless their heart. Bless their heart. I knew it when I was getting on the plane. I'm walking down the aisle of, 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 of the plane, and, and people are looking at me like, no, oh, it doesn't look like maintenance. It's, exactly, like I don't know in, how to fix planes at all. Um, so I'm sitting in the back of the plane, I'm like, Ty, relax, man. It's 2019, man. People go everywhere all the time, bro, relax, right? And the captain gets home, he's like, uh, we're en route to Montana. We go on to Montana. <laughs> Anybody on this plane not going to Montana? <laughs> Please exit now. <laughs> Sir. I think I'm that sorry he's talking about. But like I said, I had a great time in Montana. It was awesome. When I got there, landed in the airport, they had this huge, huge stuffed grizzly bear. Huge, right? And, and I'm trying to take pictures. But right next to the, the stuffed bear is this old uh, rustic dude, right? And I say rustic, not because he was old, but you ever seen somebody that looks rugged? You know what I'm saying? Like cowboy rugged. You know what I'm saying? Like they know how to make cigarettes out of tree bark. Like, <laughs> like that type of dude, right? So he saw me taking pictures of the stuffed bear, and he's like, hey. <laughs> I'm paraphrasing. Um, <laughs> you want to know the trick to outsmarting one of those things? And I'm like, um, I'm never going to put myself in a situation <laughs> where I have to outsmart. Like, I stay on concrete. I don't, I don't frolic. I'm not a, <laughs> not a wilderness person, bro. I'm not. I stay with buildings and walls and stuff. He said, well, what you gotta do is you gotta act big. Yeah, I'm sure y'all heard that before, right? They say you gotta act big. They say, it, what they say is the worst thing you could do in a bear attack, Run. right? Shh, I'm testing that theory. <laughs> I'm not that good of an actor, I can tell you that now. <laughs> that bear would know, at least definitely by smell. Barry be like, you scared as hell, ain't you? <laughs> I know, I could tell. I could tell. But I told him, I was like, man, that ain't gonna work. He said, it'll work. I said, it won't work. He said, I said, it will not work unless you come across a dumbass bear. <laughs> you in the forest, the bear's like, rawr. You're like, rawr. <laughs> like the bear's gonna be like, okay. I thought she was somebody else. <laughs> I was about to get you, boy. <laughs> but you look like my cousin, it's cool. <laughs> Let's get some picnic baskets. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> nah, uh, I am happy to be here though. Uh, the trip didn't start out great. I thought they lost my luggage which is never a good feeling. That's a horrible feeling, because to me, the vacation, the good times start the second you get your bag, right? The second you pick, because you've already gone through a lot to even get to that destination. You've gone through traffic to get to the airport, the long lines and all that stuff. Then you sitting on the plane with somebody that you don't want to, like someone's been farting the entire flight. <laughs> you ever had that person that you know it's them and then they know the moment that you know that it's them? <laughs> and they kind of look at you like, oh, I hope you don't know that it's me. And like, yeah, I do know it's you. So, 
so the second you land, you're like, yo. So when you get there, it's like that emotional roller coaster waiting for your bag, that hope and that despair. You're like, ah, oh, there it is. No, it's not. There it is. No. And the more the, it goes around and you don't see your bag, the more you start judging everybody that is getting their bag. <laughs> like, oh, he don't even look like he deserve his bag. <laughs> She's 102, she can't even carry her bag. <laughs> so no, I'm, uh, they, they didn't lose it, thank goodness. Uh, but like I said, I hadn't been here in a long time, so I had to use uh, the GPS to get here. Waze, anybody familiar with Waze? <laughs> I love Waze. Waze is the fastest, right? Not the safest. <laughs> Found that out yesterday. Waze will have you going through alleys, backyards, somebody's house. Like, turn left at the sink. Because it's spooky accurate. Super, you'll be driving, it'll be like, object in road. And you'll look, there's an object right there in the road. And part of you is amazed by that technology. Then you freaked out like, where the hell are you? <laughs> to where you can see this Skittle in the road. <laughs> it's a small object. Spooky accurate, it'll be like, car on shoulder. Yo, look, there's a car right there on the shoulder, yo. Spooky accurate, because then it'll be like, crack deal, two blocks ahead. <laughs> Spooky accurate, because then it'll be like, better deal two blocks south. <laughs> you got too much information up there. <laughs> Did you guys know you could uh, download Morgan Freeman's voice? That's right. Did as soon as I found out. <laughs> Why would you not? What kind of heartless person are you that you don't want Morgan Freeman telling you how to get to where you got to go? Be like, I'm Morgan Freeman. Let's go home. Yeah, let's go home, man. Let's pick up Andy Dufresne, too, bro. Three people got that Shawshank reference. That's fine. That's fine. They'll edit it out. Anyway. I like that they can uh, customize the voices. I wish they could personalize it to you, because sometimes that voice is so automated that it throws you off as you're driving. You'll be driving, just enjoying it. He'll be like, bing, turn left here. And you're like, oh, that was my favorite part of the song. <laughs> I like they personalize it. I, I think they should customize it to you, though, your personality. You know, that way when it comes on, it doesn't throw you off. You know, you rolling down the street. <laughs> hey, player, turn left at the next corner. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's my dude, all right. You don't want to get one too personalized, though. You don't want to get one with, like, emotional problems. <laughs> it don't take you where you want to go. It take you where you think you should go. <laughs> like, church, I didn't pick church. That's my point. What the hell? My ex-girlfriend house, you know you still love her. Mind your business, GPS. <laughs> it's fine, man. I'm cool with it, man. Here's the beauty, though. I will say, here's the beauty of getting older is that you accept the type of person that you are. That's where I'm at in my life, you know? Uh, and I'm cool with that. Example, ladies, I'm the type of guy that if we go out for the evening and somebody disrespects you, I will defend your honor. Quickly. Quickly, yes. I'm very chivalrous like that. But <laughs> if we're driving home and we get a flat tire, I'm calling AAA. <laughs> I'm not even going to attempt to even look in the back. Isn't there a spare? I don't know what the hell's back there. I didn't even look in the trunk. I didn't even know I had a trunk, to be honest with you. I'm not. I'm not doing anything masculine in that situation. Not at all. Don't expect it, especially if it's dark. Psh, nah, man. <laughs> you ain't getting me killed while you get a head start. No. <laughs> I've seen scary movies. I know how that work out. <laughs> That's how every movie happens, bro. I'm serious. Dude, they get a desolate road, and the guy's like, oh, don't worry about this, honey. I got it. All right, put on some slow music, and 
light a candle, I'm gonna go out here and take care of this. He goes outside and you just hear, uh! <laughs> and she's like, Tom? You ain't getting me tommed up, no way. You are not getting me tommed up. I'm the type of guy, ladies, that will offer you my jacket. If it's cold outside, I will offer you my jacket. Uh, yeah, um, but I'm not the type of guy, though, that uh, once you turn that down, then um, you get cold later. <laughs> Offers off the table. You obviously make bad decisions. So we shouldn't both suffer for that. I was, I was a Boy Scout. Um, People think I'm joking when I say that, but I am dead serious. We'll be walking down the street and you'll be like, they'll be like, isn't it already offered? She gonna learn tonight. <laughs> I'm not a love song dude. And fellas, you know you're a love song dude if you listen to love songs when your lady is not around. That's the key. If you put them on when she ain't there, then you're like, I don't hate love songs. I just think they're unrealistic and they put too much pressure on dudes. The lyrics are so beautiful. How can it not be pressure on you, man? Such beautiful lyrics. You're driving, trying to pay attention to the road. You ever been in the car with your lady, love song come on, you feel like she's judging you? <laughs> right? Again, you're just like, I'm trying to focus. She's looking at you like, you don't do half of the stuff he's singing about. <laughs> I'm like, I also don't have backup dancers, so. <laughs> And you don't look like the girls in the videos. But. <laughs> what the what? Is that the, no, no, is that the. All the women are gonna be like, edit that out the special. Edit it out. <laughs> edit it out. I applaud all the dudes for laughing at that, by the way. It was very, very brave of you to, to do that. I'm just saying the lyrics are unrealistic. I'm gonna make love to you all night long. Who? Ooh, that's not a real stat. Stop that. <laughs> it's a great lyric, though. Sounds way better than I'm gonna make love to you for four and a half minutes. <laughs> Depending on what time the game, come on. <laughs> Baby, you know what I'm saying? So, um, it's fine, man. Uh, I don't go to nightclubs anymore. I'm done with that. I was used to, I, I, I can't even do it, it's boring. I ain't got no game, no game. I don't even attempt. I don't, it's like, oh, are we interested in each other? No, okay, I'm gonna take a nap. Um, I'm serious, it's boring, I ain't got no game, and I don't know when this started, but yeah, the music is too loud. Isn't that crazy? I don't know when that happened for me. I was at a club in New York, I was in there two minutes, went to the DJ like, Cause you can't hear the person right next to you. They are literally this close and you gotta yell the whole night like, what? What? <laughs> and all you can do is hope that their face matches what you think they're saying. <laughs> Matter of fact, you wanna say something bad, that's the time to say it. <laughs> yeah, I kill people on Tuesdays. <laughs> I'm saying, that way when it come out in the news, she be like, I didn't Oh, baby, I told you the first night I met you. <laughs> now I gotta go, it's Tuesday. Don't try and change me. <laughs> ah, I love animals. I'm a dog lover. I love my dogs, yeah. Right? I love my dog. I love my dogs uh, more than I love people. You know, like I know this, like I, I, people think that's what we're like, I know this. You know how I know I love my dogs more than I love people? Because my dogs will poop and I expect to pick it up. <laughs> I went and bought decorative bags from a store, specifically knowing that poop was gonna go in these bags. I put thought into the bag that I was gonna get to put this poop in. There is no human being in my life that comes even close to that kind of consideration. <laughs> and my girl was like, you wouldn't do it for me? And I'm like, no. 
She's like, well, what if I was just drunk? And I'm like, then hell no. That's irresponsible poop. I can't pick up irresponsible poop. I said what I would do, because I'm not heartless, is I would get you out of your clothes, get you in bed, stroke your hair till you fell asleep, and be like, hey, get some rest. I know that must have been embarrassing. But you do got some stuff to clean up tomorrow. I'll be right over there for you. All right. I gotta, I gotta get ready to get out of here in a few minutes. Um, strip clubs. No time for segues. No time for segues. No time. Uh, I don't go to them anymore because um, the strippers seem to be the same age they were uh, when I started going to strip clubs, um, which is inappropriate because I got kids. You know what I'm saying? I used to go to strip clubs and be like, ooh, who's your daddy? Now I'm like, where's your father? Let me ask you this, and, and I know I'm taking a chance asking this question in this city. Um, <laughs> fellas, do you think it's okay to go to strip clubs if you're in a relationship? No. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> Two dudes answered for every dude in this room. <laughs> the rest of the dudes are like, oh, I don't know what a strip club is. What is... <laughs> is that where you go to pray? Is that a, a prayer place? Is that what they call it? I, I wouldn't do it either. I wouldn't do it either, fellas. Not because, not because I would be tempted to do anything at the strip club, but because I don't want to have to explain to my girl that I was at a strip club just in case something messed up happens. You know what I'm saying? Like, what if I get shot? <laughs> at the strip club, this is the type of stuff I think about. You can't explain that to my girl? Like, ma'am, we got something to tell you. What is it? <laughs> I'm gonna play both parts. It's about your boyfriend. What happened? He was shot. Oh my God! He was shot and killed. Oh my God! He was shot and killed at a strip club. Uh, what? <laughs> yeah, he was shot and killed at a strip club. We need you to come down and identify his remains. Forget his remains. You tell the girl he was getting a dance from to identify his remains. He can't pay $20 on the cable bill because he up here getting lap dances. My point is I don't want to be laying there dying on the strip club floor and had a cop come up and be like, Mr. Barnett, don't look like you're going to make it. And I'd be like, <coughs> okay. Can you drag my body down the street? <laughs> right next to the church. And please, please wipe this glitter off my forehead. <laughs> Thanks a lot, you guys. Ty Barnett, I appreciate you.